special guest, because we've had so many big American stars, but it's nice to have a big British star with us. Well, well medium-sized. Yes. <laughs> Although I am working on it. <laughs> Why do you think it is, Cliff, that, that we've seen so much of the, the gospel music has come from the States? Why do you think there's not more within this country? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that it's because that it is such a big country. And there, I mean, apparently there are like... 40 million evangelical Christians and so therefore that's a very big market already to draw upon if a Christian makes a record there his market is 40 million strong yeah. I mean it's just not true there's us. another thing too I learned the other day I think something like 82% of the American population consider themselves Christians um, or believe in God whereas it's something like two or three percent in this country so that's a big difference well, too. That, but that is a big difference because I mean uh, as you well know a lot of artists in this country gospel artists have uh, not been able to sustain themselves financially a lot of people just expect if Christians are appearing in their local church they've got to do it for nothing it doesn't work that way if you want excellence you have to support it and if someone comes through and they're really good then I'm afraid they have to be paid for that work so they can go away and not have to spend the day working in a bank and rehearsing two hours at night uh, it needs to be full time if, if we want our Christian artists to be really good well we're going to see some highlights now from the series because unfortunately this is the last program in the present series and I've enjoyed it oh. so much but one of the highlights for me was in the very first show when we had um, that incredibly talented man from Chicago Jesse Dixon, Jesse Dixon I backed up by the, the Church of God in Christ choir singer satisfied take a look at this oh. <laughs> They have just got such a, a creativity in their music. I, I, I love the fact that, that the guys, even who weren't Christians, were prepared to talk about it. Oh, right. But the guy who really made us all look as if we dressed at CNAs was that character <laughs> from, from the west coast of America, who, Leon Fine. Patillo. What about the headband? <laughs> I couldn't believe I wanted one myself immediately. <laughs> J A E image was Sal, what's his name? Sal Solo, yeah, yeah. he was quite a character. I mean, I, I mean, when you showed that little, you showed a little video, which I don't suppose you want to show that now, where, which was what he does when he's with his band. With classics and Yeah, with the That's black right. leather and everything. And I love the idea of having those, um, their little boy Qu choir, choir boys, boys behind. Singing. It was, it was, it was a, beautiful. It was, it was a real a good purity mixture. and a clarity in what they did. Yeah. So, I mean, if you've got that, I wouldn't mind seeing that again if we're showing yeah. it. those guys is they showed it was possible not just to be restricted within your own culture that that music can cross all boundaries mm. and there was another lady who did that for me and I think maybe she's, she was my favorite artist in the whole program a lady called Helen Gelzer oh, I know, who yes. not only looked fantastic I mean she sang incredibly well and she was just so gracious <laughs>
song that you're going to do now as a duet, you wrote just recently on a trip to Haiti. Yes, I, I tend to need to get cajoled into writing. I mean, I don't find it easy. A long, long time ago when the shadows decided that I was the front man, I was the one that talked to the press, they continued writing and I lost the habit. But every now and then if I'm given a project, and in this case I was going to Haiti to make a little documentary film about sponsoring young kids, um, and I was inspired to write about the film. And then I was sitting in my bedroom in the hotel once and waiting to go to dinner and I picked up my guitar and this song came through and I thought, well, while I'm in the mood, I might as well write it. And it came out really better than I'd expected, much better. Tell us just a bit about the lyric behind the song. What, what's it actually talking about? Well, you know, when I start writing songs, sometimes I've got no idea at all. I play, in this case, in fact, I found the, the introduction, which is a, a riff played on synthesizers. I did it on my guitar first, and I thought, oh, that sounds pretty, and I wrote something around it, a melody. And then when I started to write lyrics, I thought to myself, we're always asking questions. We always have to know why things happen before we actually take a step. And when you think about Christianity, it's a step of commitment. And quite often people pull back because they don't understand 100%. And I think it's ludicrous. Okay, let's do it. I will right. follow you. Okay.
enjoyed that. Yeah, so did I. It's a lovely, lovely song. Thanks. But the three songs you're doing on the programme are all very different. They show the different kinds of music. Yeah, I must say, uh, my career, uh, I've tried to sort of separate things and do things in a different way. I mean, the next song is more sort of heavy. And, and our, the final song I chose to do is like a rock spell knees up. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> But this is a bit of no for something completely different, isn't it? It's a very dramatic number. It's one of them, I mean, I remember seeing you did it in concert in London and it's absolutely devastating to it's watch. It's intense and those people that suggest we don't have a message should listen to the lyrics because it is a very, very hard-hitting lyric. I think a very challenging one. Let's watch Thief in the Night. again on the Rock Gospel Show. I want to say a special thank you to Cliff Richard for being our star guest this week. We'll be back just before Christmas with a couple of specials. I hope you'll join us then. But before we go, I'm going to hand back to Cliff Richard and his band with Why Should the Devil Have All the Good Music? i 
listen to the radio They say that rock and roll is wrong We'll give you one more chance I feel so good I gotta get up and dance I know what's right and I know what's wrong And I don't confuse it All I'm really trying to say is Why should the devil have all the good music? I feel good every day
Let him come on in and stick. Yeah, yeah. Let him do what he wants to do. Yeah. Won't you let the Holy Spirit fill you? Yeah, yeah. Let him come and say yeah, yeah. anything he wants to say. Yeah, yeah. Let him do what he wants to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hear it for Rock Buster.